What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this frosted bubble effect for any wallpaper for your iPad or your phone. Now in this design I currently use the dimensions that you'll see in the requirements down below but you can use any screen size and when you go to create a canvas you can actually just create a canvas for your own screen size of your own iPad if that's something you want to do but I've left the screen size that I've used in the description down below where you'll also find a link to the palette and that's all you're going to need. So as always, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you want even more tutorials from me, I post three more exclusive tutorials every single month over on my Patreon. So check that out in the description down below as well. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas and you'll just need to change your background color to black, we then need to go ahead and start to draw in all the different shapes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our color currently is gonna be set to white. So we're just gonna double tap in the top left hand corner there to select white. And then we're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to calligraphy and we're gonna go ahead and scroll down until we find the monoline brush. Now mine is currently set to 12%. And one thing I recommend for this tutorial, if you tap on your brush, and we'll just tap on the monoline brush again. If you go to your stabilization settings, I have mine set to maximum amount of streamline and about 50% stabilization. That will just allow you to draw nice shapes that are nice and wobbly, but it will get rid of a lot of the actual wobbles in the line, so it'll keep them nice and neat. So hit done when you're done, and then you've got the same brush as me. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on what will be our pink shapes. So for our first shape, I'm gonna create a nice little wave down here. So starting outside and then just bringing that in like so. And we can go ahead and drag and drop the color into that space. We're then going to go ahead and go up to our top area here and create another little wobble. So I'm going to start outside and just introduce this and just bring this in and then just let that just wobble out like so. And then again, drag and drop it into the space you want to fill. So that's our first lot of shapes. Nice and easy to do. What we're actually going to do though is we're going to go up to our layer. We're going to go ahead and we're going to reduce the opacity down just for a second so you can still see it on the screen. So about 20% will do. This is just going to aid us in a second because we're now going to go back up to our layers and create another new layer. This is going to be our teal set of shapes. So we've left the original shape there so we can see where we just need to overlap a few different shapes just to create that nice frosted effect later on. So the first one I'm going to create is just up here. I'm going to let this just run into here and then out at the bottom. And then I'm going to create a sort of counter to this wave. I'm going to create one that just runs in from there and just out to the right hand side. So these are the two shapes I want to color in. So I'm going to drag and drop color into both. Again, just for a moment, we're going to go ahead and go to the layer and lower the opacity down. Again, if you get down to sort of 20% or somewhat around there, you'll still be able to see it. You'll also see the overlap of your shapes. And then the final step is to go up to our layers and create another new layer. And we're going to create our little blobs now that are just going to sit on top of all these objects. Now, one thing you'll need to do is prioritize the outside line around the object. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in my first blob. So I'm going to go ahead and just create this first. And I want to make sure my lines are nice and smooth on the outside because obviously we're going to fill the inside. So you can see there, I'm super untidy on the inside and that's fine because all we're going to do is drag and drop the color in anyway. So then you want to make sure your lines run into each other nice and smooth. And then I'm going to create one extra shape just down here. So I'm going to start here, come around just like this. And then just let that line just run into there and drag and drop the color in. And we've got what will be our blue shapes. So that's all the shapes we need. We can go ahead now and we need to increase the opacity on all of them. So the top one's still 100%. So is the middle one. So we're gonna go ahead and increase that up now. And the bottom one is also 20%, so we're just gonna increase that up. Then what we need to do is, we actually need to invert the selection. So we're gonna tap on each one and tap on it and use the option of invert, which is why I made you change it to white. So it changes perfectly to black. So double tap on the layer and invert it to black. So the white was only used as a temporary sort of color so we could see it on the screen. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is, introduce our first set of colors so the bottom one here is going to be our pink tone so for a second just turn off the top two so we're going to work on this bottom layer first which is actually going to be our pink colors so the first thing we need to do is actually create a new layer we're then going to go up to our colors and we're going to grab the pink we're going to drag that onto the screen for a second we're then going to go ahead and use the original shape underneath as what i would call a cookie cutter shape 
So we're going to tap on the bottom shape, we're going to tap on it and use the option of select. Now we want to invert that selection using this option down here. Then go back to your layer and go to the pink layer and tap on it and use the option of mask. Now for a minute, you're obviously seeing that the color here is in this outer area. If we tap on the pink layer for a second, tap on it and clipping mask it to the shape below, it will disappear completely. And then we're gonna tap on our selection tool when we're done. Now this is where the magic sort of happens. We tap on the mask here, so making sure you're on the mask and go to your adjustments, go to Gaussian blur and we swipe from left to right and wow, look at that, all that color comes in and we move up to sort of about sort of Let's go to something around about sort of 65% and then tap on your adjustments when you're done. Then what we need to do is we need to go back to our layer and we need to pinch this mask to the pink shape. So we tap on it and pinch it together. So we're applying it. Now what we need to do is we've technically got a bunch of color in here, but we can't see it at the minute because if we go up to our layer, it's clipped to the shape below. So it's keeping things nice and tidy. So what we need to do is we need to tap on this layer here, layer one, tap on it and use the option of select. If we go back up to the layer and we go to the pink layer, if we tap on it and mask it, you'll see no change, but you'll see from the mask, this area here is black, meaning it's completely hidden. And if we actually pinch the mask to the layer, so we pinch, you'll see from your thumbnail that the inside area here is completely gone, meaning if I tap on this layer now and unclip it, it stays super nice and tidy, and we still have our glow within that sort of shape. Now that is done as perfectly as we need to. We can now tap on the check here for the shape underneath, tap on it and turn it off. Because now we've done that work, we've used it as a cookie cutter. We don't wanna delete it though, just in case we need it later. So now we've done that, we just need to imagine that there is a light source up here in the top left hand corner. So we're gonna imagine that it's coming across and it's gonna hit these edges here where it faces that light source. So we're gonna go up to our layers. I'm gonna go ahead and select the pink layer and the cookie cutter shape underneath and group them together. And let's rename this group and let's just call it pink. This will allow us just to keep things nice and organized. And then above the layer here, the pink layer with the glows, we create a new layer. We can then go down to our cookie cutter shape and tap on it and use the option of select. So we've selected that shape and then we're gonna go back to the layer, the empty one we made, tap on it and use the option of mask. Then make sure you are on the layer and not the mask. And with your color set to pink and your brush still set to airbrushing and the soft brush, gonna make our brush eyes about sort of, make about sort of 8%. Just need to tap on my selection tool afterwards. And anything where that light's gonna start to trickle in, we're just gonna introduce that color. So I'm just gonna come around here, go around this edge, and then also down into here too. And just make sure you just sort of blend that out where you can. Then down here too, we're just gonna introduce that color and then just let that run out. And then just over the top of here too. So just let that run in and out. And then where possible, just reduce your brush size down to say 3% and go right in quite nice and firm and just brighten up that edge as much as you can. Don't punch a hole in your screen though. And then we'll, uh, we'll go around the top edge here too. So we're gonna go around here just introducing where that light's just trickling in nice and bright. There we go. We've got some nice bright edges on there. Then we're gonna go to our layers. We're gonna collapse the pink group down and we're gonna move on to the teal one. So we're gonna go up to layer two now. We're gonna turn it on and repeat the steps. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and grab in our next color, which is the teal and drag it onto the screen. Then let's go up to our layers and start doing the masking. So let's go to our layers tap on the layer and clipping mask it. Then we're gonna go ahead and tap on the layer below, tap on it and use the option of select. Make sure we then go to invert. Then go up to your layer and tap on layer eight and tap on it and mask it. Then make sure you tap on your selection tool and you should be on the mask, but make sure you are. Then go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur and we swipe from left to right and this is where the magic comes in again. We go up to about sort of 45%, I think that will do the trick. And then tap on your adjustments when you're done. Then what we do is we go back up to our layer and we pinch that little blur effect and make it permanent. So we pinch that together. Now what we need to do is erase this section here from this layer. So we go to this layer and we tap on it and we use the option of select. We then go back to our layer and we tap on this layer and we mask it. You won't see any visual change, but if I now pinch that mask to it, we're gonna cut that little shape out. 
And if we tap on this layer and turn off the clipping mask, we can see it's now nicely contained. Now, the reason why we keep these shapes available is because we need to cut obviously different objects, but also because we've now done all this cutting from the teal layer, if I now turn off our cookie cutter shape underneath, we now get the layer underneath come through. And we need that, of course, for the frosting effect later on. So that's why we go ahead and make all the masking. We cut out this area here because we don't need it. And we also technically cut out the sort of center of these blobs because they're technically transparent. So all we ever really get left with is this bright edge here. So let's repeat the same steps as we did in this group here, which is to create one more new layer. We're gonna go ahead and tap on this cookie cutter shape for this area we're working on and tap on it and use the option of select. And then go back to your layer, go to this layer here and tap on it and mask it. Then make sure you're on the layer and not the mask. And with teal still selected, make sure you tap on your selection tool when you're done. With your soft airbrush again, we're just gonna brighten up that left hand side. So anywhere that's gonna face our imaginary light source, we're just gonna brighten this up just a little bit more. And then we're also gonna reduce our brush size down to say 4% or 43, and then really brighten up the actual edge that's facing the light. And then just let that run out as it gets into here and then reintroduce it down here. Let's do the same down here. So increase your brush size back up to say eight or 9% and just brighten up this edge. Blend it out where necessary. Then reduce your brush size down to say three or 4% and brighten up that edge again that's just facing the light source and just let that run out at the top. And there we go, we've done our teal section. So again, let's just keep our layers nice and tidy. We're gonna go ahead and swipe on all these layers for the teal and we're gonna group them together. We're gonna tap on the group and we're gonna rename it. I'm gonna call it teal. Let's collapse that group down and move on to our final group, which is the blue one at the top. So let's turn on that layer. Let's then go ahead and repeat the same steps. So we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the teal, or sorry, the blue at the bottom and drag and drop it onto the screen. We're then gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna tap on the layer and clipping mask it. We're then gonna go ahead and tap on the actual black cookie cutter shape, tap on it and use the option of select and invert that selection. So we're gonna hide this area in this area. And we go back to our layer, we tap on it and we use the option of mask. We then make sure we're on the mask, so this one here. We then make sure we turn off our selection and we go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we swipe from left to right and bring in that color. Now, this layer here is a bit of a different one because they're quite small and also the color is quite muted. We don't wanna introduce 50%. If I go near 50%, it's just solid blue and there's not much of a sort of middle area that's transparent. So we're gonna reduce that down for a second till we get so a little cut out in this one. So I've gone down to about 29%. I could probably go a bit smaller, maybe about 26. And then tap on our selection tool when we're done. Or adjustments. Then go back to your layer and we're gonna go ahead and pinch the mask to the blue. We're then gonna tap on our little cookie cutter shape, tap on it and use the option of select. Go back to the layer, go back to the blue layer and tap on it and mask it again. Pinch that mask once more, tap on the layer and turn off the clipping mask. And then we can go ahead and turn off the shape underneath. So there we go, we've got blue section now and again you can see the layer underneath. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create another new layer. We're gonna go tap on our cookie cutter shape for this area, tap on it and use the option of select. We're then gonna go back up to our layers and tap on the top layer and we tap on it and mask it. Make sure we tap on our selection tool when we're done. Now making sure we're on the layer and we've got blue still selected and of course our soft airbrush. The first thing we're gonna do with this layer is actually just make our brush size somewhat about sort of five or six percent. And then just round the edge of this top one, just sort of just increase the color just a little bit, maybe even increase the brush size. Because these two shapes, for me anyway, were different sizes, the, the uh, Gaussian blur that we added in didn't quite add enough color towards the top area when we blurred it in. So we're just gonna introduce a little bit more color in here. So I'm just very, very, very lightly just going around the edge of the object. I'm also gonna do the same down here just to introduce some more blue before we add in the brightest areas. So just a little something like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and make our brush size about sort of five or 6% and really Add in a really nice bright edge. Well, in this terms, in this color anyway, it's not that bright. So we're just gonna go ahead and add the blue in on this edge. 
and we're going to go ahead and just do the same over here as well and just add in that brighter edge and feather that out now what we're actually going to do for this one and this layer only we're going to go up to our layers and we're going to go ahead and we're going to swipe this layer to the left and duplicate it the top one out of the two tap on the layer and not the mask and clear it and we're going to tap on the layer and change it from normal to overlay then what we're going to do is just change our color we're going to double tap on the top left hand corner to select white and then we're going to go ahead and zoom in and we're just going to brighten up this left hand edge because again it's quite a dark color i just want to make sure the blue is sort of following suit with the rest of the design so just a, a nice sort of bright edge on the left hand side that's facing our imaginary light source and again let's come around this top edge just like so and just run that out towards the bottom and you can blend them out as well just to feather on top of them and i'll just give them a nice blue look now this is where the design now takes its sort of final sort of look which is going to be the frosted effect so we're imagining that the blue is the hierarchy just like our layers and in fact let's go to our layers and let's group all of our blue layers together so go to our layers select all of the blue and group them together and let's rename that layer or group let's call it blue collapse that down so the blue as our layers show sits on top of the teal and teal sits on top of the pink meaning anything teal that shows through the blue needs to be blurred to do this we're going to go up to our layers we're going to go into the teal group and there's a couple of things we just need to adjust this layer here that's got the mask on it let's pinch that mask to it let's then also pinch our two teal layers together so now they're onto one layer we're then going to go to our smudge tool tap on your smudge tool and make sure it's set to airbrushing and the soft brush and my brush size is going to be set to about three percent because what we need to do is anywhere where the teal runs directly underneath we're just going to simply start to blur left to right and blur this line out so this is where the frosted effect starts to come into play so we're really just going to blur this out and up and down just to get rid of that solid line that runs directly through the blue section only so that when we zoom out you can now see that the teal is there but it's nice and sort of blurred then when we look over here because the blue sits on top of the pink we also need to make sure later on that we also deal with this as well so looking at the rest of our design there's no other areas where the teal needs to be blurred because there's only one area where the blue sits on top and that's here so anywhere where the blue overlaps the teal let's then go ahead and repeat the steps for the layer underneath which is the pink so let's collapse the teal group down let's go to the pink group and let's actually pinch the mask to the pink layer and then pinch both pink layers together tap on the pink layer go to your smudge tool again and now we need to go ahead and take a look at the entire design where does this pink now sit under any other colors where well, it sits under the teal here so it needs to be blurred and we're only looking at the solid lines we're not interested with the fact that the obviously the pink runs underneath the blue here but we're only interested in the soft the sharp edges we need to soften them up so down here i'm just gonna blur this out go up and down that line a couple of times just to really soften that up and get rid of the majority of that sharp line there we go you can see now it's frosted underneath our teal when we take a look over here the pink layer runs underneath the blue so that needs to be blurred because it sits under an object that sits above it just making sure we go over that line a couple of times and then of course the pink here sits then underneath the teal so this line needs to be blurred so we're just going to go up and down this line keep your pressure nice and consistent make sure you go right to the edge of the teal and then go back over it a couple of times until you're happy with how it blurs now you may need to go up and down the actual line a few times just to really blur it out in fact you may even need to increase your brush size as well but just blur that out maybe increase the brush size up speed things up a little bit and when you zoom out your nice little pink section there is also blurred out underneath the teal and then there's one extra little step you can do you can go up to your layers then go ahead and collapse the pink group down and create a new layer and drag it underneath the pink and then go into my colors and making sure we use the pink in the top left of our palette and the brush size is fairly large about sort of 40 percent up in here i'm just going to very lightly just cope with the little glow of pink in this top corner very lightly and let that fade into the center 
And if I pinch with two fingers, go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed creating some really cool wallpapers for your phone or your iPad or whatever you want to put it on. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please drop a like down below and subscribe for weekly Procreate content. And if you didn't already know, I post three more tutorials every single month, but over on my Patreon, exclusive for Patreon supporters. If you want to get your names featured in tutorials, as well as sneak peeks of upcoming designs, early access to videos and much, much more, hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support. And today's equipment list, of course, is the Sketchboard Pro that you can always use code JOELCREATE to get yourself 10% off of one. I'm currently still using the Ghost Paper Screen Cover from Upper and the Nimble Grip as well from Upper. And of course, the Pen Tips Glove as always. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.